Hello, welcome to Morning Mana, July the 11th, 2021. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can continue our study today. We're grateful for all that we have been able to learn in the past days, and we look forward with great anticipation to that which you will teach us. We ask also that you would give us the kind of understanding necessary that we might be able to share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's subject, Reason for Sabbath Keeping. Today, July the 11th, 2021. The topic, Reason for Sabbath Keeping. And of course, we're coming from Bible Readings for the Home Circle, published in 1889. What is the one great feature by which the true God is distinguished from all false gods? Jeremiah 10, verses 10 to 12 says, The Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth. Even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. And of course, that is found in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 10 through 12. When Paul wished to preach the true God to the idolatrous Athenians, Athenians how did he describe him? Acts 17 and verses 23 and 24 says, Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him I declare unto you, God that made the world and all things therein. Question. What did the apostles say to the idolaters at Lystra? Acts 15 and Acts 14 and verse 15 says, We preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea, and all things that are therein. That is, of course, Acts chapter 14 and verse 15. You should also see Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, or Revelation chapter 14, 6 and 7. What reason is given in the fourth commandment for keeping the Sabbath day holy? For in six days, it says, the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Notice that the Sabbath is the great memorial of creation and of God's creative power, a constant reminder of the true and living God. God's design in making the Sabbath and in commanding that it be kept holy was that man might never forget him, the creator of all things. The original Sabbath being a perpetual memorial of God, the creator, Calling man to imitate God in the observance of the same, man could not keep the original Sabbath and forget God. When we remember that two-thirds of the world's inhabitants today are idolaters, and that since the fall, idolatry with the train of associated and resultant evils has ever been a prevailing sin, and then think that the observance of the Sabbath as God's ordained it would have prevented all this, we can better appreciate the value of the Sabbath institution and the importance of Sabbath keeping. Question. What does God say the Sabbath will be to those who hallowed it or keep it holy? Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 20 says, And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. How important is it that we know God? John 17 and verse 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Is there any danger of God's chosen people forgetting him? Deuteronomy 8 and verse 11 says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes. 
Question. What are the reason is given for keeping the Sabbath? Exodus 31 and verse 13 says, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Now notice, to sanctify is to make holy, or to set apart for holy use. The sanctification, or making holy, of sinful beings can be wrought only by the creative power of God through Christ by the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 30, we are told that Christ is made unto a sanctification. And in Ephesians 2 and verse 10, it is said that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The Sabbath, therefore, is a sign of a sanctification and thus of what Christ is to the believer, because it is a reminder of the creative power of God as manifested in the work of regeneration. It is the sign of the power of God, therefore, in both creation and redemption. To the believer, it is the evidence or sign that he knows the true God, who through Christ created all things, and who through Christ redeems the sinner and makes him whole. So what special reason did the Israelites have for keeping the Sabbath? Deuteronomy 5 and verse 15 says, And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence from a mighty hand, through a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. So that is the answer. What special reason did the Israelites have for keeping the Sabbath as a memorial of their redemption from the land of Egypt? Notice in their bondage, the Israelites had to some extent lost the knowledge of God and departed from its precepts. The Sabbath came to be greatly disregarded by them, and in consequence of the oppression of the pharaohs, especially the pharaoh of the Exodus, as witnessed by the rigorous exactions made upon them by this latter king through their taskmasters, its observance was made apparently impossible. The special point, both of reform and of conflict, just preceding their deliverance from bondage, was over the matter of Sabbath observance. Moses and Aaron had shown them that obedience to God was the first condition of deliverance. Their efforts to restore the observance of the Sabbath among the Israelites had come to the notice of Pharaoh. Hence his accusations against them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? Behold, the people of the land are many, and ye make them uh, rest from their burdens? Says the Pharaoh. Deliverance from this apprehension and oppression was indeed therefore an additional and special reason for their keeping the Sabbath. But Egypt and Egyptians' bondage simply represents sin and the bondage of sin. Everyone, therefore, who has been delivered from sin has the same reason for keeping the Sabbath as had the Israelites who were released from Egyptian bondage. Question. What does the psalmist say was the reason why God brought his people out of Egypt and placed them in Canaan? Psalm 105, verses 403 to 4, verses 43 to 45 says, And he brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness, and gave them the lands of the heathen, that they might observe his statutes, and keep his laws. Their deliverance from Egyptian bondage was a reason for the keeping not only of the fourth commandment, but of every precept of God's law. This is indicated in the, in the precept of preamble of the law as given at Sinai. I am the Lord thy God, which thou hast, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Remember, that is the preamble. 
of the Ten Commandments. Likewise, everyone who, through Christ, has been delivered from the bondage of sin, God calls to obedience, not only in the matter of Sabbath keeping, but to every precept of his holy law. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. So what is the meaning of the word Sabbath? The meaning of the word Sabbath is rest. Previous to the fall, God designed that man's time should be occupied with pleasant, invigorating, but not wearisome labor, as found in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. Laborious, wearisome toil came in consequence of sin, Genesis 3, 17 through 19. While under the fall of the Sabbath, therefore, may bring physical rest to both man and the beast of burden, in a way not originally intended, physical rest was not its original and primary design or purpose. Cessation from the ordinary labors and occupations of the weak was ordained, not because these are wrong or sinful in themselves, but that man might have an appointed time and a frequently recurring period for the contemplation of the Creator and His works. Under the Gospel, the Sabbath is a sign of spiritual rest and freedom from sin. So we read, For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. That is Hebrews 4 and verse 10. So who gives this rest from sin? Matthew 11 Verses eleven and verses twenty eight and twenty nine says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. So notice the Sabbath then is the sign of the soul rest which Christ gives to the weary and laden with sin. Question. Was the Sabbath intended as a, dead, a day for public worship? Leviticus 23 and verse 3 says, Six days shalt thou work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. What is a convocation? A convocation is an assembly of people. Does the New Testament teach the same duty? Hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25 says, Let us consider the other to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So does the New Testament also teach the concept of public worship? Yes, it does. Hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25 says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. What does Malachi say of those who fear the Lord? Malachi 3 verses 16 and 17 says, Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spear them as a man speareth his own son that serveth him. Question. Will the Sabbath be observed as a day of worship in the new earth? Well, Isaiah 66 verses 22 and 23 says, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, 
so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Notice, thou hast made us for thyself, and our heart is restless till it find its rest in thee. What a powerful, powerful lesson here. We see the importance of worshipping on the Sabbath. Not only do we find rest, physical rest, but spiritual rest. A time of restoration. A time of growth. A time of coming close to the hand and the mind of God. A time for allowing Him to speak to us on a personal level. For us to learn the things that we must learn and understand. An opportunity to spend time with one another as we worship before our God and King. A time of restoration so that everything about us might be allowed to grow. God has called us to this moment of worship, this day of worship, and all of those who He has created will join in that day of worship. It is a symbol of His creation. It is a symbol of His power, not only to create once, but to recreate and to restore and to upgrade. And when we miss that day, when we fail to follow the instruction given, we fail to, to receive that growth of an energy that comes in obedience to the will and word of God. He calls us daily to do this in preparation for the seventh day. He calls us daily as we work our way through the rest of the week to look forward with great anticipation to that time of worship, the time of rest, the time of restoration. He calls us daily to enjoy the concept of knowing that He will be with us on that day to do many things that we cannot do for ourselves. And as we place ourselves in His hand, as we go through our week's work, our obligations, we will know, and He will know, that that special time is coming when we shall lay down all of our physical labor, of our personal labor, and join hands with Him so that we might be restored and re-established in the kingdom of heaven as a child of God. The time of Christ's removing of the children of Israel out of Egypt was a special moment in time. They were now going to be given an opportunity to learn about who Christ was again, learn about who God was, learn about keeping the Sabbath, learn about being restored to that which God originally had intended for them to be. And so all of that journey that they had was so that they might grow in grace. The same applies to us today. When we come to Christ and we begin to learn and understand the truth as it is, the Sabbath is a point of beginning where we begin to understand who God intended us to be so that we might grow in grace and be restored to that which He would have us be. Today God is calling you. And you may be aware of the Sabbath, but the question is, do you really keep it in the way that it ought to be kept? Or do you just acknowledge its existence and in between what you're doing for yourself, you spend a few moments worshipping? That is not the intention of God. The entire day should be spent with Him. Because when we do not do that, we miss the opportunity that He is making available to us so that we might grow in grace and be made ready for the kingdom of heaven. So today, Evaluate that which you are doing. Take a look at your Sabbath keeping. See whether or not it, it is according to His will. Seeing if it would meet His approval. And then if it does, then thank Him for leading you. But if it does not, ask Him to show you 
how best to make the changes that would be necessary so that you might walk according to his will. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the instruction given. We thank you that you are again reminding us of the importance of the Sabbath. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to obey your will and to be the keepers of the Sabbath in the way that you would have us do it so that we might be restored and made ready for the kingdom above. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This has been Morning Manna, July the 11th, 2021.